housekeeper all broke the law along with the, my 50th birthday. And I was working to um, seven uh, uh, um, um, film companies and 450 million people for this poor um, uh, young policeman go, are we running out of time? No, no. no. <laughs> um, put me his hand on say, you are going to prison, you see. And we all had to go and be tried. And we all said no. We, and we totally screwed up the prison thing. With, and we also, most of the people in that year and in Australia, you have to vote every year. But they all spoil, or so many spoil their um, thing by writing no dams on it. And that river, which is wonderful, it's one of the best white uh, rafting rivers in the world, it takes you 21 days to, and at one point you can stand up and take the sides and 2,000 foot, and they were going to flood it, and it is still there. And I was told, asked, would I go back? Um, to celebrate me being in prison. So I said, well, uh, why? <laughs> and they said, oh, well, well, so I did. And when I got there, and we'd had 2,500 people on the picket line in pretty nasty forest, completely uh, with land leeches. And you woke up in the morning and tore the things off you. And um, about 1,000 of them turned up to this dinner and not a single one would spoke to me because I don't believe in global warming. So perhaps I'm wrong, but I ate all the food and I went and saw the kangaroos. But <laughs> if you think about it, when Charles Darwin went into Australia and he said, look, I had dreamt that this would one time be a great nation, with a hundred uh, million people. But now having seen the soil, that will never actually work. And he was quite right. And I remember standing over one of their big dams, which dams the, the Snowy River. And um, only 1% of the water of the Great Snow River comes out of the Jindabai Dam. So I stood across it. So the water was coming out like, just like that. And I turned around and said, this is the Great um, Snowy River. It could do with a damn good a dose of Viagra, and that got all over the place. I shouldn't say those things, but they do <laughs> pop out, right? So when Darwin went there, there were lots. There were very, very few kangaroos at all because the local people ate them. And the only other thing, the only other big mammal which um, is there in numbers these days is the wombat. Now, I, used, I was on, on the picket line up in Victoria and um, I, we found a, a squashed mummy wom wombat, but the baby was still in, so we um, had her as a look after. And they're, they're um, nocturnal. So I had the job of taking the damn thing out on the lead every night, because we didn't want the, the, um, the loggers to pinch our thing. And it always used to come straight back in and go down my sleeping bag. And I found funny square things, and they do square poos, <laughs> right? Now, and why? The only people who don't do, or the only species that don't do uh, uh, square poo, well, they're not all quite square, is are the, um, the eutherian mammal, mammals. All you lot have one place from weeing from and one place from pooing on. But all the other animals in the world don't because the birds and, all, and the, the, um, the, the Australian ones, they only have one. It's a cloaca and it's that shape. But in the um, wombat, they're absolutely square. And so I rewrote the, uh, uh, the you can read the book, it's called uh, Poo You and the Potteroos Loo. And Time that actually, because worms have two holes, don't they? Well, they have one at this end, one at that end, and then each one of the small um, uh, things have four nephredia. So they're the only animal I know that can do a wee 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 wee. And you remember when I was um, miniaturised down and went, went along and was rude to the worm. So, okay. So Australia's got one of the worst. Um, things of the 
uh, of getting rid of its native form. And this guy, he's a, um, a, a mathematician, made a lot of money. He said, when I was a kid, the bilby, and that is a bilby, um, were in their millions right the way across, but they disappeared, so we're going to put them back. And I worked, I was very, very uh, privileged to work with him on this project. First of all, he bought a, um, a small farm, and then he put in a billabong, and um, then we had to teach the local kids that we were going to be very, very nasty, because we put up a big um, electric fence, and then every animal inside this were killed. They were all feral animals. There were no of the, of the native animals there at all. And we sat down, we went to all the schools, and they said, well, is it going to work? And they said, we don't know that it will work, but um, will, are you with us? And they came with us right from that point. And then when we got rid of all the, in, uh, the um, animals inside, we then started putting very, very, very rare animals back again and just to show you what the um, and of course Bellamy goes up and touch it and it's flat on my back and it's solar power and I thought oh no but don't touch it and there are actually trap doors that let the animals out but not in because as the numbers went up we don't want overpopulation inside of our nature first of all we tried it on a bandicoot they're not rare at all all the zoologists say you can't do that it's got two smaller you know a genetic base and the guy with the beard said well we only introduced five rabbits and see what they did so let's have a try and we couldn't keep these damn things down they would say oh and all of a sudden we really did have an overpopulation and this was our second one this is the brush-tailed um, woolly it's a little um, kangaroo and was getting very, very... Um, we had to buy the animals from um, zoos and then let them go. And we had thousands, well, not thousands, but all over the place. So that one worked. And then this is one of the most beautiful little kangaroos. And it's the nail-tailed bridle, and they were heading for extinction. And we found they did extremely good in captivity. So then we had to, or he did, uh, buy many, many thousands of hectares so he could, you know, carry on um, looking after the animals. We had to put the quoll in, this is the only carnivore, because we didn't want problems, so we wanted the whole thing go. And that was good fun, because it had done half bite. And there's the bilby. Now, Australians I'm sorry, are very funny people because they have rabbits on their Easter cards and you wouldn't have thought they'd have had it and um, we wanted to put the bilby they're pretty ugly things but we wanted them back on the card and very very soon we could actually have them back and you go into Australia and you can find bilbies on the Easter cards and they're back and thank goodness this one I, this is the Potteroo, and um, that's what the book was around, Poo You and the Potteroo's Roo, um, because he um, always puts his burrow at the bottom of the tallest trees in um, Australia. And why did he do that? Well, he doesn't know, but he does. Um, that they, in their poo, there is the spores of a fungus which allow these trees to go so tall. So, yeah, and we're not, we don't teach um, natural history like that anymore. It's biodiversity or something. We don't see how everything you do knocks on and often causes a problem. And this is one I like very much. This is the numbat, one of the rarest animals in um, Australia. And, and David Attenborough once was holding one in his hand saying, these will be extinct um, in a short time. So we tried it. Now you never see these things because they make didgeridoos because they um, eat the the termites, which are building, which you know, hollow out.